What's up, y'all? As you all know, I do music films. Now, the particular video we're gonna be looking at today is not necessarily a music film, but just like a one-off video. Uh, we got this we got this shot in a day, and I got this edited back to him in a day. But the key things I wanna highlight is a couple of things. Number one, uh, we shot this entire project, this entire video without a gimbal. Number two, for the most part, we did different focal lengths, if I remember correctly, but for the most part, uh, we did, we actually, yeah, we did different focal lifts. I shot this all on the 28 to, uh, 28 to 75 Tamron lens. Um, except for this wash, except for the wash shot, which was a 17, 28, but no primes was used on this. So, you know, having different focal lengths definitely matter. Number three, the rule of thirds. Number four, how different locations can really just elevate a project more than you all know. And then number five, which is kind of to me, almost one of the most important things, which is like cutting to the action. Now we are editing this on the M1 Mac studio. So you all will be able to uh, honestly, you all will be able to see how this machine also handles the footage and we're doing a screen record. So keep in mind, I have like a lot of um, videos like lined up on top of each other. They're all in 4k and they are in, um, H.265 10 bit 422. Now, if I remember correctly, we are going to be editing this on, uh, we are in a 4K timeline. So, like, you'll be able to see, like, how, like, how it breezes through. And if we, if we do, and I typically don't even edit in a 4K timeline, but at least it's just so you walk in the idea of how, how powerful the, the Mac Studio is. And if you, if you were looking at it, the, if you were considering checking it out, I think this would also be a good video to test that out for. Then I'll show you all, I will also show you all the color grade. So, here's what we're going to do first. First, I'm gonna show you all the video, and then I'm gonna break down the process of it. So here we go. Hey. Nothing's gonna. Hey. Uh huh. Voice gone and shit. I think it might sound just a little. If you know, you know, nigga. Hey. I love you. Look. A master of these creations. Imagine patiently waiting for the game to just now notice your heart. Like operation. Felt victim of being real. Plagued by the fabrication of those who've been clocking in part time in this occupation. That's Look, real. although you're low on PTO still, here's a vacation. Mm. While you away, I make sure your bitch is not out here dating. Uh -huh. Puzzled up with these words. Hey. She lost in a conversation. She hey. fighting this strange urge to hey. show me that pussy naked. Woo. I spin a block and hit a spot like I had ops. Waiting. I told her phone a friend, but those Uber rates was outrageous. Telling me come again, guess the quickie mod's been vacant. I told her I need a bitch that won't take it off while she taking. Face it, it's only up, bitch. I've been locked in this basement, filling these fucking pages with anger and understatements. I'm that underdog that's fucking over, feeling underrated. Come on, sick how they fucking hating. Guess when you cold is contagious. What's flu to a cancer patient? What? Who ain't done a feature yet? Cause the check that he need to get, niggas bank declining them payments. Now, why? Be mad as fuck as she running over y'all statements Told you to pack your shit and don't touch that fucking hey, PlayStation Hey, I'll put you on spot These problems that I'm facing as I ascend to the top I could have smoked from the clouds from I'm the looking clouds. down amongst the crowd And I'm thinking about how thinking about We how. call it a fear of heights But what we fear is the ground I Ain't here to preach no. Because niggas is broke They talk is cheap When you elite You do as you will Say as you please I Plenty gon' have words for these words I speak I know. But see, God wrote these quotes And he just Send them through me. I'm on a quest for that chest, like I'm a fucking goonie. I've been bad and bougie, dolo, no me goals in this movie. Yes, I'm riding solo, keep a nine like I was Romo. To put a nigga face on a shirt if he needin' promo, nigga. All right, so as you all saw the video, right? We I, I have a two display set up here, so you know we'd be working off one display as far as screen record goes. We had two timelines. Now here, this is just like the basic shot right here. And I also link down the let that I'm using. Honestly, I'm just using, Sony has like a, it's called like blockbuster teal and orange look. I'll link that down in the description below, but I just kind of made subtle tweaks, but for the most part, like that's what you're seeing, all right? So here is the timeline, right? Now again, this is a 4K timeline, right? And as you all can see, we have a lot of videos. We have eight, eight to nine stacks of 4K 10 bit 422, right? And just so you all can just see it, as you all can see, smooth playback. It only starts to drop frame a little bit when we get to that title. But other than that, let's go here. Again, playing back super smooth. 
Now, typically what I honestly do is I usually do like a multi-cam sequence, but because we were on a train, a lot of different like loud stuff going on, um, I did, I just, it just wasn't syncing up. So I had to do all this manually, but as you all can see, let me just expand this out. And we are using the um, tour box loop deck, right? Um, this just makes editing that much, oops, hope I ain't do something crazy, that much easier. But as you all can see, I got markers lined up for where he should be at, essentially, right? As you all can see, the markers lined up on, on that point. So if you ever have to do a video clip manually like that, mm -hmm. we have to sync up the music videos. Let's create a marker where like the artist is the first about to start like saying his first words, a prime example. You see that up, right there, right, right there on it. So let's go ahead and just undo one, boom, right here. It falls right in line. Now, we've already got like these videos, and just, just and also just so I can show you all what it would look like if all of these were like uh, essentially highlighted. If we all want to play them all at the same time, just so you can see, like, hey, um, it does play full back. All right, this this is what it all for all lines playing. See that all the all all of them playing. Had a little stumble right there because we brought in like a PNG file, but other than that, this is ten. This is essentially nine lines of 4K 422 H.265 footage. Crazy. First things first. The only two things that we did, I did with this production was, as far as the tools that I used, was a Tamron 20-75, a Tamron 17-28, a tripod, and just the A7S3. Like, that was it. You know what I mean? Like, now I was using a cinema rig A7S3 just so like I had some weight when I was doing, like, those hand movements. But what I did was I made sure that, I, like, my composition was key, right? So, prime example, let's, uh, let's just take a look at the rule of thirds real quick. All right? So then we're gonna expand this out. I have him dead center frame. And then as you all can see the guiding lines here, right? I use these lights in this tunnel to focus your attention on the artist. Like that was purposeful, right? Everything I do in this shot, you know, if you're a cinematographer, right? Not a videographer. This is the difference between a cinematographer and a videographer. Everything needs to be purposeful. So I made sure that I gave him one enough headroom, but also two, I wanted to line him up so we could focus your attention on him the entire time. And you're going to notice that throughout a lot of my shots where I have something guiding your, your vision to this artist. But again, just looking at the shot, right? It's stable. We're on a tripod. And the reason why he, now in this tunnel, you know what I'm saying? Like even though the A7S3 has great dynamic range, but in this tunnel, he was still kind of dark. Now I don't have a footage of this. The iPhone's going to show a difference. So go back, go right there. It is a difference. It is a difference. Shit, put that bitch back. Damn, let me take a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> hey look, Brooks Media out here working, man. Hey, all day, The best to do it, you know what I'm saying? So, That's why we do it. With the bounce? Showing show your face with the bounce. Mm. Oh, I look terrible. Put what that bounce in. Damn! Blowing. Everyone Damn! Blowing. <laughs> but all I did was essentially put a bounce board underneath the tripod. I was just holding it the whole time. And it's just bouncing light on him to kind of get rid of any unflattering shadows. Like, that's why essentially he almost has like this glow look on him. Same same thing here. So let's just, let's just get rid of my logo real quick, right? So as you all can see, I have him kind of being in the shadows now. For this, actually, I took inspiration for the Book of Eli. If you remember the Book of Eli, he was like doing all, all these killings in, in the shadows, but you just kind of seen like the outline of him. Well, I wanted to show that in this clip here, that like that's why you just kind of see him performing in the shadows. Take inspiration from where you can. Now, again, same thing, guiding lines, right? So here I have the two buildings essentially um, focusing your attention on him, greenery on, around him. He has a brown sweater on, and then there's just one black building in the background. Now, there's a couple of times you'll notice that I probably missed focus. Uh, I don't know why the A7S3 just wouldn't hit and focus on him. But nonetheless, as you all can see, guiding lines and, and drawing your attention to your, your artist is where this kind of plays in a lot. If I remember correctly, this one here... No, I was on a 20. No, I was on a 17 and 28 for this one. Now, for, to get this wide, I did go to 17 and 28. I remember this shot for sure. But again, as you all can see, the movements that I'm doing with him, I would have not been able to do on the gimbal, right? As you all can see, I'm just moving the camera just subtly. Again, all handheld shots. And again, check the guiding lines. I can't, I can't, you know what I'm saying, restate that enough. As you all can see here, boom. Right here, this is something guiding your attention to him, and then we have the train coming past, and you're and he's in brown. Your attention is going to him directly. It's not going anywhere else but other than to that artist. 
this is where rule of thirds really comes into play. Like rule of thirds, like if any of your music videos, you should be using the rule of thirds. As you all can see here again, what what I tell you, train is over here, right hand corner we have the sign, but again, he's in that center box. And I, typically what I try to do, if I can't, either I put the, the, the subject here or I have the eye line level here. You feel what I'm saying? Rule of thirds, man. I promise you it's gonna, it, it, will, it, can, it can make a break and change your music, your music fans. And then for this, again, we're back on the 20th to 75. And I think I was shooting this between either like a 50 mil, like a F40, like F, F4, something like that. Uh, but again, use different focal lengths because different focal lengths can just change your music films so much or your music video so much um, because you can go from a wide shot, tight shot, medium shot, and usually a 28, a 20 to 75 or a 24 to 70 equivalent can give you that much versatility where you don't have to keep switching off from primes and different primes, right? You can actually just use that one lens and get entirely different looks. Prime example, we go from this shot immediately right to a close. Now this is on a 75, but look how much like that changes just from the, the, the shot from here to here to here. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, you want to break up your shots. I Like, typically what I do is, like, I almost have, like, a system. I go wide, medium, tight, medium, tight. But you would never see me go from wide, wide, or medium, medium. I always break that up so that when the viewers are watching, they know, like, they're not essentially again, like they're not essentially watching the same scene over and over again. I'm giving you different effects, different emotion, and we're doing all this without even using effects like you know post effects, like post effects, right? This is all just good camera movement and good composition. Um, a lot of people stray away from that, man. But you don't need like a lot of effects to make your music videos pop. Be just good composition in different locations, right? Now, keep in mind. We are only about 32 seconds in into this video, right? But look how much the different location I showed you from the opener to him walking up to the train, right? To him, now him at the train, right? And then we go back to him now in the train. Again, the song hasn't even started yet. And then we go back to him, what? Where is he at now? He's on the train, but now he's sitting down on the train. And now we go back to him outside. So essentially we had like three to four different locations literally all with them before we even started rapping anything so now here here's where like the fun part comes in it's like knowing when to cut i'll tell you this the you you would know when to cut you, you cut on the actions right so let's i'm going to turn this volume back up so we can just kind of like look at this look at this timeline breakdown real quick then i'm going to kind of get into the color process a little bit just show you all that and i'm going to wrap up look see that hand movement hand movement Hand movement, hand movement. I'm cutting to him doing something so he always grabs your attention. Hand movement, and I'm cutting to the beat. If you all wanted, like, it's, it's very easy to cut to beat, y'all. So what you could do is, we're gonna expand this out just a little bit. Essentially, you will kind of see I'm cutting right on the beat, right? Boom, beat. Here's another cut right here. Go right to it. Look, boom. Here we come again. Cut. Cut. I'm cutting to the beat. Just look at your waveforms. You'll be able to see um, when you're going to cut to the beat, right? But again, let's go back to cutting to the actions. You see what I'm saying? He's doing hand moves every time. I tell my artists to do this stuff. Like, here's the thing. You have to teach your artists how to perform their songs. Like, you got to perform as if you're already on stage and you're already a big town artist. You have to teach your artists how to perform and act at their songs. So, because that just makes your video that much better. So, if you're, if a rapper's doing this, he's constantly rapping. Or what I also do is try to tell rappers to remember their hand gestures from one, one scene to the next scene. So, when I cut, it almost looked like it was like, you know what I'm saying, in sync. So, if he did like a gun raise on this scene, have him do another gun raise on another scene. You know what I'm saying? So, if he's like, boom, and we switch to another location, he doing the same stance. Yo, that's hard. It's hard. Now, back to that whole guiding your, uh, your attention to the artist. Prime example again here. Rule thirds, baby, and guiding lines. These two windows right here are your guiding lines. You got these poses as well, right? And then you have these lights up here. We are guiding, I am guiding your attention to the artist. Everything, it's intentional. I'm doing this intentionally to grab your attention. Prime example with this shot here. Again, 
I'm grabbing your attention. He, now, obviously, this is a shadow area, a shadow area. But again, we have a line here. And we have another line here. But it's, he's essentially lined up with this almost. So again, it's guiding your attention to him. And I just put him on a right third. I'm cut into action. I'm cut into the action. You see what I'm saying? As you saw right there. So we're going we're gonna to run that back. I'm cutting to action. So I'm cutting to action. So just keep that in mind. So the last part we're going to do is just going to look at the color real quick. As you all can see, like for real, for real, I only have some very basic colors. There's no curves or nothing. It tells you what I did. I got the blockbuster look on there. I did a little saturation, sharpened, um, and then yeah, that's really bad. I did everything on one note. You know what I mean? Like for the most part, like that. That was it. Literally, that that was it. Um, now, in regards to his skin tone indicator, let me see if I can pull that up and get that on this other window for you real quick. The vector scope, right? Now let's 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 go to this shot right here. Now even though his skin like is a little off, this is this wasn't an intentional effect, right? Now clearly, if I wanted to just kind of get his skin like right there on that line, I just go to gamma. And you can look at the curves. Boom! Now he's like right there on that line. And he, for the most part, like that looks that looks better, right? You know what I'm saying? Like it it does. I'm not I'm not gonna lie, but I kind of wanted like the. You know, I kind of want it to be like a little bit over dramatic, right? Just in this scene here a little bit. I wanted him like to really pop. But as you see in this scene here, he's like right on the money essentially right here, right? He He's right there. So uh, I didn't have to make a, a gamma shift or anything like that. Uh, let's go prime example. Let's see. Wait, same thing here. His skin tone is like right on the money. I literally only went with this creative look here just because I knew he was going to pop out a little bit more if I made him just a little bit more orange. So... There you have it, right? That was like a long breakdown for the most part, but to be real, like I feel like I put y'all a lot of game on how to one, how to shoot a whole video without using effects, how not to you don't have to use a gimbal, using different focal limbs, a little a little knowledge about the Mac Studio, and uh, how to cut on an action of your artist. You know what I'm saying? Cut on hand moves, and like get your get your artist engaged, teach your artist how you want your videos to look. Okay, it's not their job; it's your job. Well, yeah, man, if you learned something, man, please go ahead and give the video a, a thumbs up and a like and subscribe and share all that good stuff. I'm really trying to get more into kind of teaching you all things versus me just kind of doing like random product reviews. But I feel like this video is definitely helpful. And I, even though I'm not a photographer, you all want to learn more about photography, just in a wedding photography business. I make sure I link my boy, Mac Julian, uh, description down. I make sure I link him down in the description below as well. And other music films that you all saw in the beginning, I make sure I link those down in the description below as well. So if you learned something, again, comment, subscribe, like, thumbs up. Appreciate you for watching. It's your boy Sean B and I'm out, man. Deuces.